Year to date in the stock market, the REIT industry has performed extremely poor with the majority down double digits. And even after the Fed meeting just yesterday, it is still a mystery as to when the Fed will begin to cut rates. Nonetheless, we have found an incredibly undervalued REIT that we are looking to buy. It is Prologis, the biggest REIT, in fact, by market cap. And we can see currently it is flat. However, year to date, it is down a massive 23%. So in today's episode, we're going to take a look why we believe this to be incredibly undervalued, one to consider in your own portfolio. We're going to do our usual look and analysis. We're going to look at the growth on the top line as well as on the bottom line net income. We want to explain the health of the company total cash versus their total debt. Importantly, we're going to talk about the dividend safety as we can see the yield is around 3.75%. And we're going to look to both insider ownership as well well as to institutions, whether they've been buying or selling this very large real estate investment trust. And we're going to take a look at what this company does, a quick fact sheet showing why we see a lot of opportunity, as well as briefly discussing their quarter results that did come out just a few weeks ago and why the share price has taken a hit. And as always, we are going to run it through the valuation model, getting to our intrinsic value, our acceptable buy price, given our investor margin of safety and look towards Wall Street to see what they're anticipating for growth over the next 12 months. Now we can start the episode off with just explaining that this is an industrial REIT. As we can see, they do have real estate across the world. We have the US, other Americas, Europe, as well as Asia, and they have 216 billion assets under management with a vast base, 1.2 billion in fact, square feet across four continents, a very strong credit rating as well. And when we take a look at essentially the impact, we can actually see that the economic value of goods that have been flowing through their distribution centers sits around 2.8% of the world's GDP. So a very large amount when you do think about it. And what I really wanted to point out from this is that they have some very big customers that are not going away anytime soon, notably their largest customer being Amazon. But we do have Home Depot here coming in at a close second. And when we take a look at the type of goods the vast majority is made up of transport freight as well as consumer goods and just a few things while we will dive into this in quite some detail we can see in terms of core funds from operation per year growth in fact over the last five years it has been very strong up 12 percent with the average of REITs at six percent and their dividend also increased at a fairly strong rate 13 percent over the last five years as we can see here other logistic REITs Fairly similar, but still Prologis marginally higher. Now, in terms of this company's historical performance, and we just want to point out firstly that we do have a fairly strong buy signal from Wall Street, although we do have two hold ratings. Now, it is currently trading right there towards its 52-week low. It does have a forward yield of 3.77% and a P to FFO forward-looking of 187 Now, year-to-date, they have been absolutely hammered down 23%. Now, it's not just the interest rates we will also look, but they have lowered their guidance. In fact, one of the things we want to touch upon is the occupancy. Over the last 12 months, down 16%, as we can see, trading at around $97 October 2023, where we did see the majority of those in the stock market down significantly. And over the last 10 years, you would be up around 150%. Bear in mind, it doesn't include those dividends reinvested. We can, in fact, see that it is currently somewhere away from all-time highs, around $170. So now let's jump into how the revenue has progressed. As always, with REITs, we want to see 5 to 10% growth over the longer term. And what we can see here with Prologis, $1.9 billion in 2014. We know 8.3 billion in their latest annual report. So some very strong growth. I do like to look at this graph and we can see over the longer term, it has been growing at a fairly strong rate. In fact, higher than the 5 to 10% that we do target. We can, in fact, see more than four times growth just over the last 10 years. As always, a quick look at their bottom line net income, and we can see a very similar growth, 636 million in December 2014. Again, latest report, we see just under five times growth at 3.1 billion, although we do want to point out it is dropped slightly from the previous year at 3.4. 
But nonetheless, over the longer term, whilst we do note some inconsistencies on a year to year basis, it is moving in the right direction. So how about a quick look at the health of the company? So their total cash, it does sit from 351 million in December 2014 to around 500 million in their latest report. So typically with REITs, their cash is fairly inconsistent and we can see that quite clearly here. Nonetheless, it is slightly higher than it was 10 years ago. Now, in terms of their debt, numerically and directionally, we always compare, although it is typical for debt in essential REITs to increase dramatically. And we can see here 9.3 billion in December 2014, 30 billion in that latest report. And no surprises, their debt has been increasing over the longer term. This is something we will consider when analyzing their dividend safety. Taking a look at their FFO and we can compare it to how they've performed. So essentially in that latest quarter, we do note it was pretty much in line on an FFO basis. And we can note over the next few quarters, the anticipation is that it is expected to increase. Although we can see the next quarter, year on year, it is meant to be a drop of negative 26%. But the subsequent quarters, Q3, Q4, as well as Q1 of 2025, we are anticipating increases from year on year basis. So something just to note, when we do take a look though, over the last four quarters, pretty inconsistent. They've had two beats and two in lines. Good to see though, they haven't had any misses. Now, when we take a look and look at their valuation, it is a D grade. However, with REITs, just want to make it clear, a lot of these metrics aren't applicable. The main ones we want to focus on is the P to AFFO on a forward basis. With other companies, we look on a P to E when we are looking now for REITs on a P to AFFO. Forward looking 22.86, we do in fact see that it is significantly higher than the industrial median at 14.21. But again, this is something we will compare to the company itself, given it is a very high quality REIT. We'll look over the last five years to see how that compares. When we take a look at their growth grade, well, they get an A, so very strong rating. On over the last five years on an AFFO basis, 7.96% year on year, a lot better than the sector median. We can also note in the shorter term, just over the last three years, a lot better, nine versus 4%. There are other ones to look at, but we can note here on a forward-looking basis, it is expected to drop 0.83% with the sector median at 1.68, hence the C rating. And we also note on a year-on-year -year basis, minus 1%, again, sector median coming in marginally better. Now, there are other metrics here if you do want to take a look at, but we will cover the vast majority when we do an in-depth analyst on their metrics. So let's take a quick look at the profitability. Now, they get an A-plus rating, Few things to pull out. Firstly, cash from operations, 5.31 billion versus the sector median at 243 million. We do note their AFFO payout 85%. Now we'll look at that and compare it against the industry average, but we can see here the sector median 74.59%. AFFO yield coming in lower 5% with the sector median at 7.58. So a lot of metrics. Again, you can take a look at these. We will cover these again shortly. But overall, it isn't looking too bad when we analyze it purely on selected metrics. But we want a fuller picture and we will do that very soon. How have they performed against others in the industrial REIT sector? We have Rexford Industrial Realty, which we have covered around a couple of months ago. It was looking very good when we did review this one. EGP, STAG, as well as a few others. So over the last 12 months, we do note, remember, total return, including reinvesting those dividends, they are down negative 14%, so one of the worst performing, although we can see over the last 12 months, interesting to note, only Stag is having a positive return, and this is one that we also do hold within our own portfolio. Over the last five years, we do note Prologis is up 50%, again, in fact, the best performing of one of the best over the last five years alongside EGP, and when we extend it over the last 10 years, Quite strong in this sector for the vast majority. We have PLD up 233%, REXR up slightly higher, as well as EGP not too far off Prologis. But again, just remember, even though I would say this is a pretty decent return on your investment over the last 10 years, past performance is not an indicator of the future performance. So let's jump into the insider ownership. Now 0.5%, so fairly small, but we do know two instances of insider selling for around 15 million over the last 12 months. Now to note this, we do have to go back to quarter four of 2023 as well as quarter three of 2023. When we take a look at who these individuals are, we can see in fact on the 20th of December, so quite some time ago, the director did sell over 103,000 shares for $133, so significantly higher than the current trading price. 
price for 13.8 million. Now, again, decide if you want to include that in your own investment thesis. We don't necessarily believe insider selling is a bearish signal, but the data is available there. It is also quite some time away. We are talking about around five months ago. In terms of institutions, well, 93.5% institutional ownership, 6 billion worth of sales, 16 billion worth of buy. So institutions, not just over the last 12 months, have been buying a significant amount more than selling. But even in the more recent quarter, we see a massive buy there, 6.6 .6 billion versus 128 million sold. So again, don't copy insiders, don't copy institutions, do your own due diligence. But we do know over the last 12 months and in Q1 of 2024, institutions have been buying a lot more than they have been selling. Now, just to let you know, we have released our latest free weekly article. If you want to gain access to this or any others all completely free, do click on the pinned comment below. We just want to point out this article here. We do talk about all the websites that we run through on this channel on these episodes. So if you are interested to know what they are, do click on that. Also, others that are very interesting as well. Now, let's take a look at their quarter results. Now, the first thing to note, this was a couple of weeks ago. So we do see the share price down from that point. What we want to take a look at is their core funds from operation per share 128 for Q1 2024. The same quarter from 2023, 122. So a marginal increase from the same quarter last year. But what I really wanted to drag out from these few pages was this slide here. So we do understand why the share price did drop, in fact, after they released their earnings. And this is the reason right here. So firstly, they essentially lowered their guidance. So we can see a net earnings attributable to stock common stockholders, 3.2 to 3.45. We note here they have lowered it. And the same here for the core FFO on both occasions, essentially a lowering of guidance. And we also want to draw your attention to something that isn't great at all. Again, Factor this into your own investment thesis, your margin of safety, but the average occupancy they have lowered as well for the full year from 96.5 to 97.5 to 95.75 to 96.75. Whether or not you believe this has a massive impact, market is overreactive, or if you think the opposite and it's actually very, very bad and makes it very bearish, again, that is for you to decide and come up with your own conclusion, but we are just presenting the fact. Dividend safety, 61, it does look to be safe. Market cap, 94.3 billion. It is a large cap company. And we can, in fact, see just a few days ago, or in fact, yesterday, it was reaffirmed. And the safe rating does suggest a dividend cut at this moment in time does look to be unlikely. Key metrics then, well, in the last recession, unfortunately, they did cut the dividend during the 0709 crash. They didn't maintain it. It was, in fact, a dividend cut. And we do know negative 80% recession sales with the S&P essentially negative 12, so massively below. And they also massively trailed the S&P negative 84 with the S&P bringing in negative 55. So this may be one to avoid if you do believe a recession is around the corner. Now, we do know they did increase just a few months ago, double digit 10%. We love to see that over the last five years, as we just mentioned earlier, 13%. So very strong. However, given their dividend cut over the last 20 years, on average, it has been zero. And we can clearly see here it was cut in 2008 as well as 2009 and 2010. And we can see here leveling off before they did, in fact, start to increase it again. They have 10 years of consecutive increases with 12 years of paying a dividend without a reduction. Now, dividend yield theory, as always, states the company is undervalued when the current yield sits above the five-year average. We have our first sign of massive undervaluation, and we have another undervaluation signal. You may argue the forward P to FO is very high at 23. We can see, in fact, real estate does sit much lower at 13.7. But when we look at this company over the last five years, it has been trading at around 28.8. So in relation to the five-year rolling, it is lower. Again, we don't conclude on any of these models in singularity, and we will take these towards the end of the episode to conclude. Free cash flow, remember, we only look at this for other companies, not REITs, as it is more volatile. So we move on to the adjusted funds from operation per share, below 75% for industrial REITs. Now, over the last 10 years, it has met that very positive 2023 at 70%, very positive. However, we do want to point out 2024, it is expected to go up to 86%. Something to bear in mind as we do really not want to see this go much higher than 75%. So we will factor that in, especially when we look at their net debt to EBITDA level. Adjusted funds from operation, we really want to see for real estate investment trusts consistent increases year on year over the longer term. 
We do know from 2022 it has decreased and is expected again to decrease into 2024. So factor that into your margin of safety as well as when you are analyzing this company. In terms of growth though, over the longer term, it has been pretty solid. The majority of the years, double digit, which is very strong for REITs. Typically, we will see around the mid single digits. Although we do note here 2023 and expected 2024 to be negative. Sales growth a lot better than the moderate 5 to 10% we want to see as a baseline. In fact, the last two years looking very, very strong as well. When we take a look then, this is another format from what we saw earlier, but shares outstanding do bear in mind for REITs, very typical. Because we review a lot of non-REITs, you may hear us say that we love it when they do share buybacks, returning that excess cash to investor pockets. But unfortunately for REITs, they don't retain a lot of that internally generated cash flow after paying dividends. So for them to continue to increase and get bigger, they do effectively have to dilute your position. Just something to factor in and maybe compare it to other REITs that we do review on the channel. Return on invested capital then, we do want to see 3 to 5% for REITs just to give us faith that management are able to effectively allocate their capital. We can see here it is at the lower end over the last 10 years on the majority. However, 4% in 2023 looking good. Hopefully they can start to maintain this or in fact start to increase it year on year. Operating margin, this is what I love. Not only is it fairly strong, but over the longer term, we are noticing essentially operational efficiency. 41% over the last two years looking very strong. And finally, we get to the net debt to EBITDA, the earnings before interest, tax, depreciation, amortization. Remember, these are the number of years it would take the company to pay off all of their debt net of cash on hand. And this metric in particular correlates to both dividend safety and balance sheet strength. Industrial REITs, we do want to see below five. And we can see over the longer term, it has straddled slightly higher. What is good to note it is looking like it is coming down. 5.23 in 2023. In fact, 2024 is expected to be down to 4.9. So that will give some relief to that dividend safety and hopefully we can see a higher score. But there are some factors to just think about before looking at this company as a serious one for your own portfolio. Now let's jump into the valuation model. As always, if you do enjoy the content values being provided, smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button so you are continually notified of these videos as they drop. The first model we're looking at is the multiples valuation model. We have companies in a similar sector and size that we analyzed earlier. We have their P to AFFO multiple, that of Prologis, and then we get an intrinsic value of $102. Now, it does say overvaluation based on this model, but bear in mind it is pretty much around a dollar difference. So we will conclude on the multiples valuation model, essentially reasonable valuation. But as always, we don't look at any of these models in isolation. We then have the dividend discount model. So we have the yearly dividends, as we can see, nearly 13% on average, so very strong. In terms of moving forwards, we have gone for a lot more conservative at 5.5%. And this gives us an intrinsic value here showing undervaluation at $147. In fact, that's nearly 50% upside purely on this model. So the intrinsic value in today's case is just the average of these two models. And for PLD Prologis, it's arriving at $124. So the current price does sit at 103 or just under. And as always, with our margin of safety, we do like to stick with 10% as a starting point. We only execute if it meets the three golden criteria, a wide moat, strong financial metrics and good forward looking data. And then we keep going to this near the current trading price. So at 15%, it is a buy up to 106. At 20%, it isn't quite there yet, but it isn't too far off at $99.49. And therefore, we would say it is looking like a very strong opportunity at a 20% MOS level. We are talking about the world's largest industrial REIT. When you do take a look, in fact, at their customers and their clients, there are some very big names like Amazon, like Home Depot, like UPS, FedEx, ones that you believe, or in fact, that I do believe that still will be here long after we are all gone. As always, though, for those who are looking around 25%, it would be a buy at around $93. But for me, a 20% MOS level at around $99, it is a strong buy now. In terms of Wall Street and their forecast, over the next 12 months, they see this as a very strong buy. They have upside of 40%. Their price target is $144.10. However, let me know your thoughts in the comments below. There are some factors to just incorporate when you are thinking about this that reduce occupancy isn't a great sign as well as lowering their estimates. But as always, companies don't always fall for the right reasons. So let us know your thoughts. Maybe this is one that you are thinking to avoid. Maybe you're looking to add it on the watch list or maybe you are also looking to add this on the buy list. 
Let us know if you enjoyed today's episode. Smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell button. And as always, we'll see you all on the next one.